I have arrived. And look who I am watching this time. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Uh-huh, and they, look at that beautiful bush. And our garden looks so plush now, isn't that nice? Yeah, I'm gonna come out and play. Okay, I'm hurrying, I'm coming. He says, get your shoes on, woman, and let's go. So I'm going to do just that. So happy uh, April, everybody. I have a daughter who turned 34. Yes, we're at the 34 second minute mark, I just noticed. So that's pretty significant. And I am gonna take you on a journey when I go to Philadelphia. And she and I are gonna do some girl time. And also I'm gonna meet her beau and hang out with him for a while. So there, Ricky blends right into this uh, stain. There's a, a color orange. This is a really beautiful color, and this one has a lot of yellow in it as well. And that's what I think we're gonna start talking about, will and developing the will. Um, take a look at those colors. They're these beautiful hues that Mother Nature has made, right? And um, that right there is a miracle. These Jiraiya's as I drink um, a Bloody Maria. I won't turn the camera on myself yet because I don't feel like it. And this, this film isn't all about me. It's about developing uh, relationships and connection. Hey, bud. With yourself and with nature. Yeah. So I love coming to this yard. I love it because it's so beautiful. And I've watched it grow up over the years. And Ricky likes showing it to me. And it's not that time of year where there's mosquitoes yet. And look, look at all the beautiful, natural, lovely blue flowers all over. Isn't that nice? And they have one of those um, Japanese maple trees. That I've seen that thing blossom and flourish and become bigger. Yeah, and then they have, um, take, I'll take you back here. They have this bottle stuff. Isn't this a fun backyard? Um, I'm gonna tip to see the tree weeds. And they have moss. And this is the sculpture. His compost is back there. A little wind features right there. It will turn around in the wind. This beautiful evergreen is here. And this, um, of course we have a hosta. This is the shade area, as you can see by the moss. These are my grounding shoes, do you like? I've had them for a while. Mm. They moved the bird feeder since my friend Joel's um, my, my friend Robin's husband, Joel, my friend Joel, has retired. Look how much more beauty they add. See how much more beauty they add to the garden? Yeah, they do. They do. That's my drink. I put it down so I could pet the cat and hold the, the camera phone at the same time. But yes, they have their hostel garden. And I've watched it grow and become significantly more plush over the years. And they don't use any pesticides that I know of. So they have this lovely, lovely natural landscape. It's a very low maintenance and beautiful um, and natural way of having your little cottage in an urban setting or otherwise. <clears throat> this is the dogwood tree. Oh no, this is a maple. And then this is as well. And they turn the most brilliant colors of oranges and reds. And one year they had a lot of yellows. And in the fall, I shake the tree and Ricky there, um, he gets excited when all the leaves come down. It's fun for him. So we've made little sculptures um, 
I'll come out here at one point and make a little, what do you call those things, kerns? When you make a stack of stones? Wanna see the rest of it? Let me show you the fire pit. Ricky's busy over there being a cat. And there's a little hole underneath the wall that he likes to go under. The fencing there, see it? Yeah, you like that uh, place to go? <laughs> you do, I know. I know you do. I know you do, I know you do. Wanna show me the next thing? Where do you wanna take me? Let's go look at the fire pit. And so I brought some wood over for somebody's party. And so now I can burn wood because I added. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not going to burn all their wood. Hey, buddy. Isn't that a gorgeous cat? Isn't that a gorgeous cat? So I've known Ricky for a while. Haven't I, buddy? Mm -hmm. I'm digging your backyard and there's drink here. Mm. Oh, look, it's the theme of the day. Reds, oranges, yellows. So the willpower actually is destroyed um, by uh, mental confusion. <laughs> what do you think's been going on on the planet for a while, right? So if people do this sort of not just psychoanalysts, okay? You do have to figure out why you came from, um, why you're having difficulty in relationships or if you're attracted to toxic ones. And if you have any toxic behavior yourself, you can take a look at your childhood in the comfort of your own uh, headspace <laughs> without fucking up anybody else's life. But my goodness, so many people don't recognize that they've had horrible childhoods and they're angry about it and they take it out on their partners. It's called unconscious behavior. And uh, what I do currently is I honestly have come to a new chapter in my healing. My uh, mother, uh, who I visited in We'll talk about the willpower and the colors as well, and mental mind fuckery and how it makes it so that you get a distortion in the third chakra, but it's less important to actually hear that that's the truth and that's the problem, and more important about what you can do about it. So we will be doing exercises that I have learned through my own life experience in combination with what I learned through Fortune St. Germain on the crow triple seven radio.com podcast crow and jason attracted fortune de saint germain who is a descendant of the saint germain which i studied about the purple flame of saint germain the transformation and you can make that in your own body so you can always start with that transformation color rather than going straight to the problem, right? Just like an injury, you have to mend from the inside out, but sometimes you gotta start slowly from the outside to get in. <laughs> Think about that one. I'll explain later. Ah. Whew. Energy, through the energy body. So we humans just have been programmed to only look at our physical bodies as the only body without putting significance into the energy body, the light body. And so for self-healing to begin, not only do you have to have these mind um, fucks sometimes by a psychoanalyst, uh, but uh, also by relationships um, that destroy your health the body is the teacher, so that's the physical body teaching. Okay, and so that's going to be an example of where the physical world traumatized the person so much that they developed a sickness. But you got to take a German new medicine to see what part of the body that uh, is being aggravated. 
and then uh, do some examining. So for instance, I'll tell you about me. When I was living in Virginia, still, I developed a severe uh, gum disease. I had an abscess. And I decided that I would go to German New Medicine, find out what that meant, and then deal with the idea of it being a significant uh, physical response to a spiritual a dilemma and uh, or a spiritual crisis or a conflict. It's a, it's a conflict within the body. So your thoughts and feelings and belief systems are not lining up with the physical experience of what you're experiencing. Okay? So people who are able to handle life more calmly than others uh, have some sort of mastery over whatever that is which is what I'm learning. <laughs> or they don't have conflict shock is what it's called. They don't have any conflict shock. There's no conflict shock whatsoever. They know that there will be difficulties in life. And they uh, deal with them. And I'd like to get there. But at the same time, I'm realizing I'm healing from a narcissistic abuse of my life, and all of my siblings have too, and now my two sisters are carrying on with the uh, pattern, and so I've had to block them from my life. At a time, that's really important to come together. But I know from my feelings and experiences and struggles to no avail with narcissists. And knowing now my sisters have that propensity through their behaviors, I have um, recognized I can do healthy boundaries. And so my teeth, the gum line, the absence, which is from basically a pus filled um, sac in the canine, lower front, right? And the one beside it, just my not, my, my minusculely was getting gumped like a pocket. Well, I have healed it, and I'm not going to tell you how. But if you go on to Amanda um, ADV, then you can figure it out for yourself. Gum health. Or you can ask me. I'm not going to tell you and get uh, taken to court for giving up medical advice, because I'm certainly not a doctor of any kind, including mental. But I've been through a lot. And now I know how to create a healthy boundary. And the body, oftentimes, will tell you how by letting you know what you're not addressing. And what I wasn't addressing was the fact that my partner was never going to change. I was never going to be able to experience love with them or communication or any semblance of a true and healthy relationship. And my sisters, when the way they handled my mother's, um, what seemed to be her ultimate demise, death, but she turned around, of course, and the way they treated the situation made it such that I just saw them clearly for the first time. And their selfishness, rudeness, bullying, and all of that towards me was pointed out to me by my daughter and my son for the family, I created a group text. And in this group text, you could be privy to how my mother was doing, their grandmother. So there were all my sisters and my brother and the eldest daughter from each of my sisters and myself, and I included my son. So I saw a lot, I experienced a lot, but my kids saw more than I did. They told me that my sisters were bullying me. And that's when I realized that I had gotten adjusted to and had normalized mistreatment. And that's all part of healing from the narcissistic abuse. And we live in a narcissistically abusive family. For the individuals in it are not emotionally regulating they're not empathetic. And they only see things the way they see things. And any 
thought into a contrary position is met with an adversarial confrontation rather than a shared discussion of differences of opinion, thoughts, views, interpretations. So it would be kind of fun. Yeah, when I realized we, I never really had any conversation of significance from my, um, my mother or my father going through my therapy that I'm doing online for free, but uh, I'll pass it on to you and I'll also thank the man and find out more about his materials. But you gotta take those sorts of things, learning when to recognize that your boundaries have been violated. When your body is saying, ouch, learning how to recognize that it's okay to have a healthy boundary. It does not make you a bad person. And when the dysfunctional family members start blaming you, you lead to actually not get goaded into a fight because it's their tactic for blame shifting, calling the attention off of themselves so that they don't take any accountability or any personal responsibility for their actions. It's always you're doing, or you did something this way or that way. And it's all uh, called blame shifting and baiting you into an argument. It's hilarious. So learning that that was all being done in the first place, now we call it bullying, but within the relationship with the family, it has these more sophisticated terms. <laughs> hey bud, you getting hungry for dinner? Do you wanna go have dinner? Let's go have dinner. And we can come back out later, do you wanna stay out? Let's stay out longer. Let me finish my, my talking to my people, okay? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna finish talking to the people. I am. I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna tell them? I'm gonna tell them that you are such a delight. I love visiting you. And I'm glad we've been friends for a long time. How long has it been, buddy? 10 years? I think it has. Yeah. Yeah. So healthy boundaries, I'm creating healthy boundaries. But the next thing I'd like to do is like, really learning how the trauma and the effect on the brain of being in these relationships oftentimes makes the person that has been in narcissistic family structures um, stymied. Stuck is the word people use now, but unless you understand what's been going on in the family pattern for so long and what the body's been dealing with, then no amount of talk and psychotherapy and life coaches are gonna do a big squat. This is what I'm saying. This is the punchline. Let's get away from that dog. The punchline is you gotta use the purple flame of transformation of Saint Germain. <laughs> and so you uh, and I can talk about that further, but you can also Google it essentially. And I'll use uh, the instruction that Fortune gave, free. And I'll give you a link if you're interested. Just write me a note. Otherwise, I'll do it when I feel like it, if I feel like it. But um, you take in through the base of your body the red light. Yeah, the red light of the earth. And you bring it in through the feet, the seat, the soul, the lower chakra. You bring it up, 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 up into the heart space into the heart space and then I don't like barky dogs but they're doing their job and then you're bringing the blue truth blue blue truth and what is blue uh, I'm getting ahead of myself but yeah what what is blue and red do when you mix them together they turn purple so the violet flame of transformation is a little bit like, you know, that, but it's the highest frequency of the blue truth, which comes from the father, uh, God frequency, or your, or your inner male, your inner guidance, 
that or God, um, but it's not a religion and it's not connected to any deity. It's connected to the force of the divine male at the exalted state, the perfect father. It's, a, it's an energy, it's a frequency. So you bring that into the top of your head and then your heart space, you're meeting the red color, which is, you guessed it, blood, but also earth, but also the divine mother. And it is that deep, beautiful mother, the one that always loves you, that always cares for you. And because it's the divine Gaia Sophia, according to the Gnostics, not the ones that are the pagans that don't believe in, um, in energy, they just don't believe in religion. Um, religions joking back, they believe in culture or tradition. The, the, the earth goddess um, is beautiful. And she is ferocious, like a feline as well. Like a cat can go from relaxed to ready to pounce in no time. They're pussy cats to us. What do, what do mice think about these things, right? And some people are afraid of cats. Because cats are amazing. So she is a lot like a cat. Yeah. Well, are you hungry, Nia, bud? Yeah, I know you are. No, he's just saying hi. You know what? He was inside all day. I think he's enjoying maybe hanging out here. I'm not ready to go in yet either. Why do I keep personifying the cat? <laughs> yeah, scratch, 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 scratch. Like you transplant your feelings or thoughts about what the cat wants onto the cat, and the cat's having a blast. The cat's having fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice sleep. Well done, Ricky. Well done. Ooh, look at you. Oh, where'd my drink go? I'm walking around like I might, might just spill it. Where did I, where did I put it? <laughs> I'll find it. Oh, look at you up there. A cat on a cool tin roof. Y'all, cat on a cool tin roof. He's up there. He can see what he needs to see. Yeah, what a cool cat. That is one cool cat. But yeah, some people are afraid of cats. And uh, so anyway, the earth goddess, Sophia, can be, is like a feline. I feel the feline energy is very strong. I have it. Why do you think I'm cat? And I don't like it when people rub me the wrong way. And when they do, I get them out of my life. So, learning healthy boundaries is the only way to empower yourself. Be looking for in the future or look in a playlist if I have an energy exercise playlist in the future uh, for that uh, exercise or a link to how to find it. All right. And then we will do a actual meditation i'll tape it record it with my voice on um taking in the violet flame so that you can do it with me i'll use a singing bowl and i will uh use words and guide you into the meditation that you'll be able to mp3 download so that you're not attached to the internet when you listen to it it'll be like not attached to the internet because I don't trust those free apps that people have. Call me a conspiracy theorist, but um, I don't believe anything that you listen to on sub while also being in your alpha state should be hooked up to the internet. Um, you should record a podcast or meditation, put your phone on airplane mode, and then listen to it from a healthy distance, my recommendations anyway. <sighs> we'll talk more and we'll do those exercises. Enjoy life. You can shut up dog anytime. <laughs> Ah. 
You know something though, that dog really is doing its own job. I just don't like the hawk barking in my ear and that particular type of bark. So for all you dog lovers here, I don't love all dogs the same. I don't love all breeds the same. I don't like barky dogs. Like, um, you know, I'm, I'm off of Bumble now pretty much, uh, meaning I'm not going on it, but I got really upfront and everything with my profile. And I basically said, since 2010, I've been divorced and now I'm open to meeting a healthy relationship. Um, up front, I'll tell you, I am a survivor of narcissistic abuse and I know I can only uh, have the highest quality human in my life. And I kept everything else short and sweet. I, I limited my photos to three. And before I was like, okay, let's take a look at what's available and maybe I'm open because I was open to the possibility I could find love without, uh, I thought I could find love um, even though I wasn't attracted to them because in the past I had been attracted, but it wasn't love. But I tested that method. My first response, right response, actually is accurate. My own intuition, I don't even have to meet these guys. I can see everything in their photos. And I realized my intuition is really high. And that was one of the things in my um, childhood that was beat out of me. It, uh, it was actually, I, my face was hit across. If I said something in the past, and then I found out later it was accurate and true, but I'd already been hit for saying it. <laughs> and so now I'm like, all right, I don't have to uh, meet people I don't want to meet. I can see it right there. I don't have to settle. I don't want a 5'5 five, five guy. I don't want anybody below 5'9. And even that's borderline too short. And yes, the male penis does have something to do with it, but if a man's over 6'3", that's too tall. Yes, there is too tall. I don't like too tall. It's like all that man. Oh my God. <laughs> that's just way too much to work with. Yeah, tall guys, they freak me out. They're giants. So anyway, anyone from between um, five nine and six two. That's my limit. <laughs> I can't get this thing to turn off. Mm, I'll do it this way. Hey, signing off. All right. Let's see how to do this. Okay, let's just turn this thing off, right?